Hi guys and welcome back to Fragile Bridges, where it's about keeping the dark reaches of the Mediaverse connected from the past to the present and the mainstream to the obscure. I'm your porter with the goods Marcus and today I'm delivering another flawless piece of cargo and the film that introduced us to the charismatic cannibalistic killer Hannibal Lecter. It's Michael Mann's 1986 cult classic masterpiece, Manhunter. Intruder entered through kitchen sliding door. Nationwide victims. Yeah, this is Will Graham of the FBI. One killer. This is what the subject's teeth look like. Have you ever seen blood on the moonlight well? Multiple trails. Just you and me now, sport. One hunter. I'm gonna find you, damn it. FBI agent Will Graham. Manhunter. In my opinion, Manhunter is a very important film whose innovative subtleties are still felt in cinema and television today. And it also contains what I feel is the best version of Hannibal Lecter. But we'll discuss both of those points in depth later. First, let's go over a retired FBI profiler named Will Graham comes back on the job to help find a psychopathic murderer nicknamed the Tooth Fairy, who only kills during the full moon. Seeking help and to recapture the mindset of a killer, Graham has occasional meetings with an imprisoned serial murderer whom Graham caught years ago named Dr. Hannibal Lecter. But with the full moon only a couple weeks away, the investigation turns from just a race against time to a tense psychological game of cat and mouse between Graham, the Tooth Fairy, and Lecter, leading to question who is the quarry and who is the hunter. It's a great premise on its own, but Manhunter wouldn't be the film it is if it wasn't adapted and re-envisioned by... Michael Mann is better known for producing the hit 80s cop drama Miami Vice and for directing the 1995 film Heat and the 2004 Tom Cruise Jamie Foxx hitman flick Collateral. But his real masterpiece is the 1986 film Manhunter. Mann brings the style of Miami Vice to this Thomas Harris adaptation, using the pastel neon colors of the 80s to convey mood throughout the film, and his attention to detail and realism is second to none. But part of what helped bring Mann's vision together expertly is... It's been said that Michael Mann is extremely meticulous and will work tirelessly to get the shot he wants, but it certainly helps having a great cinematographer on board, and that's where Dante Spinotti comes in. Spinotti's work in this film is amazing, creating scenes and still shots so cool I wish they were sold as posters. Manhunter was also the first time Michael Mann and Spinotti worked together and it led to a collaborative effort on a number of Mann's future projects, including the 1995 hit crime thriller Heat. Spinotti even did the cinematography for the 2002 remake of Manhunter titled Red Dragon, but the images of that film did not resonate as strong for me as the original. But along with great cinematography, what sticks out about this film is... It's hard to talk about standout performances in this film because almost every actor gives a standout performance. So let's start with our main character, Will Graham, played by William Peterson with his usual 80s enigmatic, cool, Steve McQueen-esque demeanor, in a much more cerebral and introspective role than his thrill-seeking, renegade persona from To Live and Die in L.A. Peterson also does a great job of making you feel the internal struggle he's having about sharing the same kind of thoughts as the killers he's hunting down. And the devil on Graham's shoulder telling him to embrace his darker side is none other than Hannibal Lecter played chillingly by Brian Cox. Most people know him from The Bourne Identity and a number of other films, but this is the best role of his I can remember, and I'll discuss his performance a little later. Let's move on to our main killer in Manhunter, the man known as the Tooth Fairy. Well, here I am. Played by Tom Noonan, who gives a praiseworthy performance balancing between being a malevolent monster and a gentle giant. I think the real mastery is a man of Noonan's 6'7 stature being able to seem meek and helpless at times throughout the film, almost making you sympathize for this psychopathic killer. Almost, but not quite, because when his mean streak comes out, good lord, 
And rounding out the cast are Joan Allen, who some may know from the Born Supremacy and Death Race, whose pre-film training at the New York Institute for the Blind is on display, giving a very convincing performance as the visually impaired, kind and caring love interest of the killer. And last but not least is Dennis Farina from Law and & Order and & Snatch, and Michael Mann's previous film, Thief, who plays Graham's former partner and accompanies him on the investigation. I'll admit there's not too much to his character except just being a very loyal friend to Graham. I just think that Dennis Farina is awesome in anything. Speaking of awesome, let's talk about the... Seems like I haven't done a movie with a bad soundtrack yet, which tells you how much I think a great soundtrack makes a film much more immersive and conveys mood. And that's certainly true with Manhunter soundtrack, which features songs by The Reds, Shriek Back, Red 7, and Iron Butterfly. As far as Stownet tracks go, though, I think the synth-composed songs by Michael Rubini are the best the film offers. One titled Seon has a very ethereal feel to it, which is perfect for the dream sequences it's used in. And then there's Graham's theme, which is the catchiest song on the entire album and just oozes all sorts of 80s coolness, from the simple catchy synth beat to the banging drum and eventually the awesome guitar solo that takes over to the song's end. Finally, more important than the track itself is the timing of Iron Butterfly's Inagata de Vida in the film, which is on point, creating a sense of fear and suspense leading to the film's climactic action. And now that we've discussed the surface things that make this movie so damn good, let's also talk about the film's impact on modern movies and television. Manhunter is a very different detective movie for its time, mainly because of the heavy use of forensic investigative techniques not seen in film until then, and the fact it was made when the term serial killer and criminal profiler were not commonly used. And it's had a resounding influence on current crime television shows like CSI, which also happens to star William Peterson, or shows like NCIS, Criminal Minds, Cold Case Files, the list goes on. But it's not just the forensic side of the film that's left an impact. Peterson's sympathetic portrayal of an agent whose own mental state has been fractured from the cases he's worked on has changed how these typically hard-nosed cop characters are portrayed in crime thrillers today. Most notable is Matthew McConaughey's introspective, nihilistic portrayal of detective, criminal profiler Russ Cole in HBO's True Detective. Certainly not every single forensic investigation show or introspective cop character has drawn their inspiration from Manhunter, but it was one of a kind for its time and certainly laid a strong foundation that's constantly being built on to today. While we're speaking of staying power, let's also talk about the... As I stated earlier, this is my favorite role of Brian Cox's career and also my favorite version of Hannibal Lecter, as he's more subtle, reserved, and overall realistic compared to the over-the-top but iconic character Anthony Hopkins portrayed him as in Silence of the Lambs and subsequent films. Another reason I feel Brian Cox's version of Lecter is better is because he's seldom seen throughout the movie, leaving more mystery and intrigue to the character. Silence of the Lambs expanded the character's role and screen time, and I think Anthony Hopkins was alright, even though I felt his performance was a bit over the top at points. But I even prefer the dynamic of the investigator and Lecter in Manhunter compared to Silence of the Lambs. Lambs is more of an investigative mind relationship and more of an innocence encountering evil story, but there didn't seem to be as much moral struggle in the film. Whereas Manhunter is an interaction between two sides of the same coin. One good, one bad, but both with a killer instinct, and a more screwed up symbiotic relationship. And I think it added to the tension of the film a bit more than in Silence of the Lambs. Now since I haven't seen it, I can't speak on the television show Hannibal starring Mads Mikkelsen, but up to now for me, Silence of the Lambs was the last semi-respectable showing of Dr. Lecter, as he went on to become pretty much a cartoon character in the sequels, like in the 2001 sequel Hannibal when Lecter lobotomizes an FBI agent played by Ray Liotta and makes him eat his own brains. Yes, delicious. Or the overall god-awful 2007 prequel to the whole franchise titled Hannibal Rising, which I remember my mom wanted to see because of this one clip. Do you have any guilty knowledge of the death of Paul Mormon? Guilty knowledge? Yes, my guilty knowledge is that I've watched this movie. 
This film and Hannibal both painted Lecter as this stealthy psychopath, but he only tended to kill assholes and people that had it coming so the audience could continue to root for him. I prefer the Lecter that could possibly attack anyone at any moment, and for me, that was the Brian Cox original portrayal. Can I keep this? I haven't decided yet. I'll start it up. When you get more files, I'd like to see them too. You can call me when I have to call my lawyer. They bring me a telephone. Would you like to leave me your home phone number? No. Now, before we wrap things up, it just wouldn't be a real Manhunter breakdown if I didn't talk about why I like Manhunter better than the... Now, the way I viewed and read through these may have part to do with why I like Manhunter the best, as I saw it multiple times before reading the source book Red Dragon by Thomas Harris, which of course did a better job of giving you more character insight, which is normally the case when comparing film to book. But I felt his version of the killer in the book was almost too sympathetic at times, as it focused a lot more on his traumatic, abusive upbringing and insanity rather than the investigation and suspenseful events taking place. But despite its minor flaws, the book was at least still entertaining. Unlike the 2002 remake titled Red Dragon starring Edward Norton, Anthony Hopkins, and Ralph Fiennes. This adaptation actually followed a little closer to the novel, The Manhunter, but by god it was boring. I remember taking multiple viewings to finish the film because the pace was so slow. Performances fairly lackluster, and what little action there was had no style. Ralph finds that the killer stands out in the film, and I think it's his willingness to throw himself completely into this insane, maniacal character. Edward Norton and Anthony Hopkins, on the other hand, felt like they were just going through the motions, and there was just no real tension or energy to the movie. Weirdly enough, I think it's a well-made movie, whose flaw was actually relying too heavily on the novel, but also shoehorning in more of the lector scenes to appease the audience. So the way the standings lay out for me, is number three is the 2002 remake Red Dragon, number two is the novel Red Dragon by Thomas Harris, and number one is Michael Mann's Manhunter. And that brings us to my conclusion. Not only do I think Manhunter is a great, stylish, suspenseful, and entertaining crime thriller that gave cinematic birth to one of the most iconic characters of the last 30 years, it's also an extremely important piece of cinematic history whose impact and influence are still being felt and displayed on screen today. Without a doubt, I give Manhunter a well-deserving 10 out of 10. Well, this delivery was a bit more strenuous than others, but it was well worth the journey, and I certainly hope I did Manhunter justice. If you haven't seen Manhunter yet, it's available to watch with your Hulu subscription or to rent on any streaming platform. And if you have seen Manhunter, Red Dragon, read the book, or just a Hannibal Lecter fan, let me know what your thoughts about any of them are in the comments. Remember to like and subscribe guys if you do like these videos, but it's time for me to get back on that long winding road making more and more connections along the way. Once again, I'm your porter with the goods Marcus, and I'll see you on the other side of the bridge.